Hi, this is Salman Landana and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 152 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case in which use of the reversed guide wire technique was instrumental in achieving a final successful outcome. The patient presented with stable angina and was found to have ischemia on the anterior wall on stress testing. Diagnostic angiography demonstrated a bifurcation lesion in the proximal to middle AD at the takeoff of a large diagonal branch. It was actually hard to optimally visualize this lesion, but the worst stenosis was proximal to the bifurcation with some stenosis distally and about a 50% stenosis in the origin of the large diagonal branch. The plan was to perform percutaneous coronary intervention of this lesion, so we advanced the guide wire that went easily into the diagonal branch. However, we did have significant difficulty advancing various guide wires into the LAD. All the guide wires wanted to go into the diagonal. This happened despite using a microcatheter, this is a Corsair, and despite using various guide wires, including SUO3 and a C on black. Moreover, while we were trying to wire the LAD, the patient developed chest discomfort and ST segment changes, and this is the problem. We have lost flow into the LAD. So this is an example of acute vessel closure during attempts to wire the LAD. We do have flow into the diagonal, but the flow into the LAD has stopped. What do we do if there is acute vessel closure? The first step is to maintain wire position if we have wire in the vessel, which does not apply to our case since we had not wired the lady to start with. The second is to determine and treat the cause of the acute closure. There are several potential causes. The main ones are dissection, thrombus, or embolization. And in our case, since this happened when the patient was undergoing wiring, this is most likely a wired-induced dissection of the LAD. And the third step for acute vessel closure is to assess the hemodynamics and provide support if needed. Our patient did have chest pain, however, he was hemodynamically stable, therefore no support was provided. How do we specifically treat dissection? It depends on whether we have a wire in the vessel or whether we can get a wire into the vessel. The solution for acute uh, treatment of dissection is to place a stent, but the problem is what to do if we cannot get a wire into the vessel, and this may require emergency coronary bypass graft surgery. So the first step is to try to wire the true lumen, try to minimize injections because they can worsen the dissections. Use sometimes CTO techniques such as ADR with stingray or using a retrograde approach can help advance the guide wire into the distal true lumen. And if everything fails, and this is a significant vessel, which it was in our case, then emergency coronary bypass graft surgery may be needed. So we tried several wires to wire into the LED. This is a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter. We tried a SUO3, which is soft atraumatic, 0.3 gram wire, and the CO black, but we had difficulty getting through. We also tried different views to see if we can help us direct the guide wire in the LED direction, but once again, we were unable to advance the guide wire towards the LED. Here we are. There is some trickle of flow going down the LED. The patient is feeling a little better. The AKG changes are better, but there is still TIMI1 flow into the LED. So what can we do now? How can we achieve successful wiring of this challenging lesion? As you can see, the angulation is unfavorable, although it doesn't appear as challenging, but getting a wire from the LAD is harder because there's a tight lesion in the LAD, and I think the lesion biases the wire course towards the diagonal. We decided to use the so-called reversed guide wire technique, which is also called the hairpin wire technique. And in this technique, we take a polymer jacketed guide wire. This is a C on black. We place a standard band at the tip, and then we create a 180-degree band, about 3 centimeters from the tip of the wire. We then advance it into the branch, and then pull it back slowly, and what we're trying to achieve is the guide wire to enter into the angulated branch, and then as we pull the wire back, the tip of the guide wire goes through. So this is a nice illustration of how the reversed guide wire technique can help wire through tortuosity. Here we're coming back, 
we getting the ostium of the LAD and then we make the bend and the wire keeps on coming back. And this is an injection of contrast confirming that indeed we have achieved wiring of the LAD. But the problem is that uh, there this difficulty advancing the wire further down because there's this big 180 degree bend in the wire. So the next step here is to advance a microcatheter. So this is our Corsair into that uh, reversed wire into the vessel that we have wired. And now we remove the C on black guide wire and advance a workhorse guide wire. So fortunately now we're in a good position. We do have guide wires in both LED and the diagonal. We predilated with a 2.5 millimeter balloon and that restored a little better flow. We do have uh, some disease in the diagonal that seems maybe a little worse than before, but um, we performed intravascular ultrasound and that uh, demonstrated some diffuse disease distally. There is a lot of plaque next to the bifurcation. This is the diagonal wire, but appears to be soft without much calcification. So based on the IVUS and based on the angiogram, we decided to proceed with uh, provisional standing. This is a 3.0 by 18 millimeter onyx frontier that is deployed across the origin of a diagonal. We jail the wire in the diagonal. After doing that, we still have flow in the diagonal. However, the lesion at the origin of the diagonal may seem to be a little worse. There's also some um, ambiguous area distally, maybe some distal edge dissection. We did do another intravascular ultrasound and uh, that demonstrated some diffuse disease distal to the stent. The stent uh, appeared to be well expanded. This is the wire coming back from the diagonal. And then as, as we come back, again, we have soft plaque more proximately. So we debated about whether we should place a stand or do some ballooning in the diagonal branch. And uh, eventually um, we first placed another stand more distally because there was this hazy area distal to the first stand. So this is a second drag eluting stand. And then we perform proximal optimization. And uh, we decided to use the pressure wire to assess the potential hemodynamic severity of a diagonal, but unfortunately, we were not able to advance it through the stand into the diagonal branch. So we ended up getting the Sasuke back and then using a Sion Black guide wire. And then with uh, manipulations of the Sion Black, we were able to advance it into the diagonal branch. You can see here that it's cutting on the struts of the stand, but eventually it makes it way through. There's some prolapse of the wire, but then we pull back, redirect and gently advance it. And then the wire makes it into the diagonal. We then removed the jailed guide wire. And uh, this is how things look like. The diagonal did look worse. So at this point, we decided that we should probably place a second stand. And this is a situation where we have a side branch that appears to have a severe lesion after we did the bifurcation standing the provisional standing of the main vessel. The next step is POT, which we did with a 3.5 millimeter balloon. We rewire the side branch as we did. And then the question is whether it looks good enough or not with ballooning. But in this case, it looked uh, significantly stenosed. Therefore, we decided to proceed with standing the side branch. And there are different techniques that can be used. For example, the tap or TN protrusion or the reverse crush and culot technique for um, angles that are less than 70. In our case, the angulation of the diagonal was less than 70. There was similar size of the diagonal and the LED. So we decided to go with a culotte technique. And these are the steps of the culotte, which are described separately in a different video. But essentially, both branches are wired. In our case, we have already delivered the first stand, not in the most angulated branch because it's a bailout for provisional. But nevertheless, we have the first stand in. Then we did pot, then we rewired the vessel, and now we dilate the struts, deploy the second stand, perform the proximal optimization, and then rewire the initially standard branch and do a final kissing balloon inflation. So we rewired, as we showed before, we did the first kissing balloon inflation. These are two 3.0 millimeter balloons in the diagonal and the LED. And then we placed a 3.0 by 15 millimeter on its frontier from the diagonal going back into the LAD. So we have this double barrel or culotte segment into the proximal LAD. We try to optimize uh, the overlap so we don't have an excessive uh, 
length of stand coming proximally into the double barrel area that was deployed and then after doing that we rewired there was not much discrepancy in the size so we did not do proximal optimization but this was a workhorse wire that easily advanced through the diagonal stand struts and then we delivered again 3.0 millimeter balloons and performed the second kissing balloon inflation we do have good expansion which we expected based on the IVUS findings and uh, this is the intravascular ultrasound showing again good stand expansion this is uh, the side branch coming in with the side branch guide wire we can see here that the origin of the side branch looks pretty good without much jailing from the stents and then more proximally um, again the vessel looks good there's some plaque more proximal to the proximal um, end of the stent and then we get into the main we did uh, proximal optimization with a 3.5 millimeter balloon and uh, th look, things look good and then there was an area that looked diseased a little more proximal so we placed an additional 3.5 by 8 drag eluting stand that uh, provided a nice final result excellent flow in both the diagonal as well as the LED so in summary this case illustrates several important lessons the first one is how the reversed guide wire technique can help salvage a case of acute vessel closure. In this patient, we had difficulty getting a wire into the LAD, and in the process, we likely dissected the mid LAD and could not advance the guide wire. By advancing a reversed polymer jacketed Sion black guide wire into the diagonal and then pulling it back slowly, we were able to wire into the LAD, and that was the key moment that turned the case into a success after that we tried provisional provisional did not work so we ended up using the culot technique since there was similar size of the side branch and the main vessel and of course like every complex pci we did use intravascular imaging with ivus for stand optimization thank you